I'm starting to work on a Campeche chair. This is Jefferson's favorite chair in Monticello, 18th century, brought from Mexico with somewhat of a Spanish uh, history. And this is not an upholstered chair, it just has a leather sling, a very thick leather hide that is uh, just uh, tacked to the pieces here. And I'm doing this in walnut. The original was done in mahogany. These two legs here, or styles, front and the back style, have a lap joint in the middle. And that's what I've uh, worked on here, is this lap joint that connects these two pieces. Now, I created the model in SketchUp, and of course then there are all these uh, drawings, exploded view, etc., uh, that helped me build something like this and create pretty precise components. And and this is that lap joint with a full-size template. And other templates, of course. Here's the front leg or style and it has some through mortises. The, the original chair did not have through tenons and mortises but I will be doing uh, I will be doing it that way and here's that lap joint in the middle and then the long back style here also has that that uh, lap joint with some mortise and tenon joints. The first thing I did then was just bandsaw out some rough shapes uh, based on these uh, curves of the templates. This is one and a quarter thick uh, stock. And I haven't done any filing or shaping, final shaping on, on these pieces. You can see here where I did a lot of cuts on the bandsaw. To, to, I was using a one inch blade so I made multiple cuts into the, the shape and then came by and knocked those pieces out. So I haven't I haven't uh, filed or worked on any of these edges yet. I want to create all the mortise and or the, yeah all the mortises first and these lap joints first before doing. I have to be careful about these sharp corners here with an acute angle, and I left a little bit of extra material here to help from knocking that out. I also put some, can't see it now, but there was a little bit of, um, of epoxy glue that I put on that, on these edges right here to help prevent them from blowing out. These joints I, I marked with a, another little template which is the, the exact shape of this joint and so I used this block to to knife out the edges here and this this one is like this there's a little bit of slop here which I needed to be able to get this thing together but I initially marked it out based on the exact uh, shape of this of this full-size piece here. 
and after scoring the line, I chiseled down a little bit to get a shoulder, and then I used a router with a few passes to knock out the waste, and then I cleaned up the edges with, with the chisel. So I've done that with the router. Now the other pair of legs I will do a different way. Um, here's the other uh, front style and you can see where I've got some epoxy on here to protect that corner. And I've got an extra little piece that I didn't bandsaw off that yet that, that helps to protect this corner down here. So this next method I'm going to use will be to saw. I'll chisel out a little bit of a channel on these knife cuts here. These knife cuts are based on on this template here. And so I'll channel out a little bit with the chisel and then use a handsaw to cut the, down these angles. And I'll make several cuts with a handsaw and just knock out that waste with a chisel. And uh, I don't think that's going to be faster. I don't think that's going to be slower. Um, I think I can do that in about the same speed whether it's the router or the handsaw chisel method. Um, there'll be less sawdust and noise with the handsaw method and and uh, I think I can protect these edges a little bit better uh, with the with the handsaw method. So that's the way I'll proceed with the next set of lap joints.